Let's bring in former Hawaii Democratic Congresswoman, former presidential candidate, and Army reservist Tulsi Gabbard. She's just back from deployment in Africa to go after Al Qaeda affiliate jihadists there. Uh, Congresswoman, thanks for joining us. Hey, Brett. I want to talk about Afghanistan foreign policy and counterterrorism, but I want to start on the issue of immigration that's pressing now in the news. You tweeted out uh, this today. Uh, you said the Biden Harris open door policy has been a disaster. It needs to end now. The main beneficiaries of open borders are the gangs, cartels, and human traffickers. The Trump policy of having people wait on the other side of the border worked and needs to be reinstated. Your, your thoughts about what's happening in Del Rio and how the administration is handling it? Uh, it, it is an utter disaster and failure, and it's directly attributed to the Biden-Harris administration's open border policy. This is not only a humanitarian crisis, it is a, a national security crisis, and it's something I've said uh, all along, which is that if we do not secure our borders, uh, then we can't have a secure nation. Uh, there are so many issues that, that have happened under this administration that have led to this point, and their continued failure of leadership is exacerbating the crisis that we're seeing play out before our very eyes. But do you think, having been in Congress, that Congress can deal with this issue? Congress has proven, unfortunately, to put partisan politics ahead of actually passing real uh, necessary immigration policy reform. But what we've seen under the last uh, several months under this administration, unfortunately, and, and Joe Biden is a friend, uh, I hold no malice towards him, but I have to say that the, the policies and decisions that have been made via executive order by the White House have led to this open border policy uh, with thousands, tens of thousands of people coming and, and attempting to and sometimes successfully streaming across the border. And you think that's a national security threat as well? It absolutely is. How, how can you say that it's not when we have no idea who is coming across the border? And once again, how can we ensure safety and security for the American people when we don't have a secure border? All right. Uh, the counterterrorism fight, the president uh, talking about how it's evolving, how it's going to change. Take a listen. We'll meet terrorist threats that arise today and in the future with a full range of tools available to us. We're better equipped to detect and prevent terrorist threats and we are more resilient in our ability to repel them and to respond. There are a lot of people, uh, Congresswoman, who say uh, what happened in Afghanistan and what is happening now and how we handled it has really opened the door for more terrorists. You've just come back from Africa, which is also a hotbed of radical uh, jihadists. Your thoughts on where we are? Uh, well, as, as you know, Brett, uh, in both East and West Africa, there is a surge of these jihadist terrorists, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and affiliated groups uh, are increasing in their strength. Uh, the withdrawal from Afghanistan is something that I agreed with, but unfortunately, the way that this administration executed that withdrawal has been an utter and abject disaster, which is continuing to play out as we speak. Uh, for those who say, and we should continue to monitor Afghanistan to make sure that there are no al-Qaeda and ISIS strongholds that are allowed to start to take root. Uh, if we're seeing that that's starting to happen, then we need to go and take them out. But we should not be under the illusion that this is a problem that's only limited to Afghanistan. And the proof of that is that al-Qaeda, for a very long time, has, has uh, been able to get refuge and, and actually have training camps and, and support in Pakistan, which is a problem that not only hasn't been addressed, but uh, we've seen the United States continue to support Pakistan uh, in spite of this known fact and reality. So this is a bigger issue here um, that, that really needs to be addressed. Are you still a Democrat? Yes. And will continue to be, despite the criticism on a number of fronts? Well, look, I, I've never been about party politics, Brett. Uh, I, I think you know that about me. I'm about putting country first. And the problems that we're seeing on a whole host of policy fronts is those in positions of power and leadership 
putting partisan politics, their own selfish desire for power, ahead of the interests of the country, ahead of the interests of the people. And that is, that's what I always try to do my very best uh, in, in looking at different policies, is we have to put the people and the interests of our country first. Well, I want to ask you about this. You know, we're just getting the tip of the iceberg about this John Durham investigation, and there's been an indictment of a Hillary Clinton attorney, um, Mr. Sussman, about uh, basically infusing this Russia narrative uh, w with the help of various media outlets and others. Uh, and it may go other places. We don't know. We're following it. But you have a unique perspective in that Hillary Clinton once called you a, a Rus Russian asset. Um, just to remind people, take a listen. They're also going to do third party again. And I'm not making any predictions, but I think they've got their eye on somebody who's currently in the Democratic <laughs> primary and are grooming her to be the third party candidate. <laughs> she's a favorite of the Russians. Yeah, she's a Russian asset. I mean, totally. And so they know they can't win without a third party candidate. They went on to confirm that that was you uh, that she was referring to. Your thoughts as we're starting to get this Durham investigation and what that means? confirms what I've known to be true, which is that you have uh, the power elite, people like Hillary Clinton, those around her, uh, working with the media, the deep state, in order to uh, bring down the destruction and downfall of anyone that they deem to be a threat to their power. Uh, outsiders, people like me, people like Donald Trump, doesn't matter, Democrat or Republican, if they identify, hey, this is someone who's not going to toe the line, this is someone who's not going to uh, follow kind of the establishment way of things that are accepted, uh, they pose a threat, and we will do, they, they will do all they can to silence or censor or cancel uh, what they view to be a threat. And so this is bigger than, than about me or Trump or anyone else. This is actually a threat to our country and our democracy. Democracy uh, and, and the arrogance that these people have in thinking they have the right to manipulate the American people, what they view, what they hear, what they see, all to preserve their own selfish interests, not caring at all about the impact on the country, the impact of the American people or who gets hurt along the way. It's always interesting to hear your point of view. Uh, welcome back anytime. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.